now that we have the splash squared away, we're going to add a few bells and whistles to the setup that we have right now. And one of the things that we're going to go back to is the particles that we have for the hero and villain beam. And so I'll show you what I mean. Needs to cook. It is loading from disk. We just don't want to view all the other other networks. So okay. So before, if you remember, I had it set up so that we had an RGB color scheme going on for these particles that were being emitted. And one of the things that I like to do with this is now we can take bits of this after the fact and do things with them. And one of the things I'd like to do is create some geo. And then from there we can break up the shape of this beam a bit so that it's not too white in the core and it adds a little bit of particulate to the beam. Just It just makes it look more interesting. Again, it's just bells and whistles to this. And so one of the things that I'm seeing right now is that the probably least represented color here is blue and that's what I want. I don't want a large amount of geo, I just want bits and pieces here and there. So we're going to isolate that. But, and it's pretty simple, we're just going to go to this blast. For group we'll do at CD. And so blue is the third channel or Z. So if that equals 1, then we also have to go guess from group instead we have to do point. So now all I have are the blue particles. There's still a decent amount there and that's fine because we can still call things out like we were doing before. So I'm just gonna copy and paste these two nodes and I'm gonna copy this third one as well just so that we can pull this out a bit more. Now that I've done that and I have particles, it's okay that they aren't blue now. I can do a VDB from particles. So then this is going to get me my mesh. And off the bat you can first tell that the P scale is way off. And you always have to start really low with minimum radius scale. And then from here we can walk this down really far. But we also need to take the voxel size down. So we're going to do something like, we're going to take this really low. So I'm going to try something like 0 0.0075. So this will give us more detail with our particles. But now these need to go down significantly as well. So a value I found prior is 0 0.055 isn't bad. And then now we are going to do VDB from, or convert VDB. And then f convert to polygons. So this is looking pretty cool, I think. I, I like the mesh. I think one thing that I would like it, we, we still have little bits here and there that I think I'd like to kind of make go away, and a good way to do that, do that is uh, an SDF reshape. So I'm reshaping the S, the sign distance field, and we're gonna instead of dilate, we want to close. So you can see it smooths things out and coalesces a lot of this into one thing. I. I think it's still probably a bit too much stuff, but that's okay because we can lower it and lower it until it seems like, yeah, because we don't want a whole lot of stuff to break this up. I said it could be a bit larger, but we, yeah, I'm happy with something like that. 
So then this is going to be the mesh that nestles within the volume that we have. And another thing that we'll need though is if we look at it, it doesn't have, it has vertex normals but not point normals and it doesn't have any velocity. And we're gonna wanna motion blur this, so a quick way to do that, a quick way, there's other ways, but this is a quick way is just to do an attribute transfer. And then make sure that we're just bringing in velocity. And there we go, we got velocity. Now I'm gonna make a null because this isn't going to be rendered in here. We're gonna export it, so out hero secondary. And then again, I'm just gonna do an object merge. This is the quickest way that I've found to export stuff to different objects, so I'm going to cut that. I'm just going to go into manual. I'm also, I'm sick of having to wait for this stuff to actually show up when I go object level, so I'm just going to hide it by default. So go in here, we'll say hero secondary. Go in and paste this. Don't really need to do anything else to it except give it a shader. And one of the shaders I've found that works good with meshing stuff inside of beams is just a glow. So if we go here, here's our glow. And then we'll do hero glow. And after that, we're going to give it a color. I'd say a good color for the hero beam is probably something orange. Make it really saturated, something like that. Yeah. Now we have to assign this. Okay, so we can First, let's go to the render view, and we'll just hero. Or we'll render the hero beam mantra node, just what we have so far. Okay, so we got a render, and we can see that it's all a pretty uniform color in there. I'll just. I'm gonna go a bit farther into the frame range, so we have a bit more to look at. Okay, and this I think looks a bit better. We have more to work with here. So this is what it looks like now. So I'm gonna give a snapshot here. Then we'll go to out and our hero beam. We're now gonna bring in hero secondary. Now we can see some stuff inside there. It's nothing too crazy, but it just adds a bit more breakup inside the shape. It's, you, you might even only barely see it, but it's just the little bits that you can add to the effect to just really take it home and make it look really special, I guess. But I think we could play with it a bit more. I think with this, Glow ramp rate. Let's make it seven. And then I'd say, why don't we make it a bit larger too? So we'll go back to this and in our VDB from particles, point radius scale, let's make this, uh, we'll, we'll take it back to 0.055. Another thing it will need is I don't have velocity blur on it. So we're gonna have to go to sampling, velocity blur. And then I believe my mantra does not have, yep, allow motion blur there. So now everything's motion blurred and you have this little bit of geo in the core that's breaking up the shape. 
nothing crazy but again just every little bit helps so now that I like how that looks we're just gonna do the exact same thing only with the villain so I can just copy and paste this And really, I think the only difference is this is going to have to be called Villain Secondary. And then again, we'll have to, I'll have to copy and paste this Villain Secondary. And you can kind of see, I don't necessarily think everyone has to work like this, but I do like to have some sort of reasoning behind the geo that I have in my object levels. So you can see here everything is sort of paired as it is on screen. Splash being center, heroes on the left, villain on the right. Things to consider when you're building uh, just nodes in general. If you ever have to pass it off, it's really easy to understand. So another thing we're going to have to do, we're going to have to go here, make villain glow and this one is going to have to be a, a some sort of magenta and make sure here we give it villain glow and then inside here we need to make sure this is linked to the villain secondary let's save that Whoop. Okay, I just got rid of it. That's fine. All right, so save this snap. Do another render. And I forgot that I have to go back to my out and add in villain secondary. Now let's see what this looks like. Cool. So let's just take a look at this real quick. You can see now, I'll do a back and forth. There's this. Now granted this isn't uh, rendered as long as it probably should have, but you can tell that there's a breakup in the shapes. Little bits here and there. And if you're constructing something yourself, you can take it a bit farther. You could increase the P scale when you're creating the VDB. Something to fill out into this volume. But I think for me this is working pretty good.